Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will actually continue to continue to study the isometries of R2 and we indeed prove that the, the set of all isometries of R2 is a group. So, here is the theorem. So, this set isometries of R2 is indeed a group. So, if you take uh, two uh, different isometries from uh, isometries of R2, then the composition is again isometry that is easy to actually see. Okay. So, let uh, F and G, so they are isometries of R2. So, then we know that both F and G they preserve distance. So, in particularly for V comma W in R2, we have f of v minus f of w that the distance between that is same as distance between v and w. Similarly, the distance between g of v minus g of w is same as the distance between v and w. Okay? So, this is true. So, now if you compute the distance between f composition of g of v minus f composition g of w. So, then this is going to be exactly equal to the distance between f of g of v minus f of g of w. So, which from the property of f you can see that this is going to be the distance between g of v minus g of w. But again using the property of g you can see that this is exactly the distance between v and w. So, in particularly the composition F composition G that also actually preserves the distance between these the images. So, now because of that we can immediately conclude that F composition G is again element of this isom isometry of R2. So, now uh, uh, this is not indeed hard. So, associativity again follows from uh, associativity of the composition of maps. Okay. The only important thing that we need to check is uh, uh, each element f in isometries of R2, R2 that has inverse. Okay. So, for that purpose we need to check it is indeed bijective map from uh, this R2 to R2 and uh, if you take the set uh, the function inverse okay, with respect to the map f okay, given f. So, then that must be isometric again. Okay, let us check that that is the very important part of the proof okay. and you can see that this identity map from R2 to R2 that will be the identity map for this uh, for this group isometries of R2. So, now let uh, uh, f from this isometries of R2. So, we need to say that this f actually has inverse. Okay. And not only it has inverse and it has that inverse is also again isometric. So, how do we check this? So, from our earlier result we can see that there exist unique matrix capital A. So, and W in R2 such that A A transpose is identity which is I2 and this uh, f of v is given by a v plus w okay, for all v in R2. So, this is what we proved. So, this actually gives very explicit formula for all isometries of R2. So, using this explicit formula it is easy to write down what will be the inverse of f. Okay. So, let us let us write down. So, if you just think about it okay the f inverse of v is going to be you take a inverse and then apply it on this vector v minus f of 0 okay so you define f inverse as this okay so this is for all v in r2 so now we claim that this is indeed inverse of f and this is an isometric so, first we will check it is indeed inverse. 
So, for that let us look at uh, f composition f inverse of v. So, and then f inverse of f of v will be like similar calculation. So, then what happens this is nothing but f of f inverse of v. So, which is going to be f of a inverse of v minus f of 0. Okay. Now, note that uh, this a inverse is actually a linear map. So, in particularly so this this thing is going to be equal to f of a inverse v minus a inverse of f of 0. Okay. But what is f of 0? f of 0 is w. So, basically you are applying a inverse on w. So, now if you just uh, uh, use this definition of f then what do you get? So, this is going to be your vector v dash. So, if you call this is v dash then by definition this is going to be a v dash plus w where w is nothing but f of 0. So, then it says f composition f inverse of v is equal to a of now a inverse v minus a inverse of f of 0 plus f of 0. So, now if you do the calculation you can see that f composition f inverse of v is nothing but v minus f of 0 plus f of 0. So, that gives you v. So, basically f composition f inverse is nothing but identity map and similarly you can do the computation for f inverse composition f of v. Maybe let me do it f inverse composition f of v is going to be f inverse of f of v, but note that f of v is nothing but a v plus f of 0. So, now if you use the formula then what you get it is exactly a inverse times a v plus f of 0 minus okay, f of 0. So, now this f of 0 and this f of 0 will get cancelled then all you get is a inverse a v which is v. So, this proves f composition f inverse and f inverse composition f that is nothing but the identity map on R2. Okay. So, now this proves that as a set theoretic map uh, f inverse is indeed inverse of f. So, now but we need still need to check whether f inverse is an isometry or not. So, let us check that. So, recall the definition of f inverse of v. f inverse of v is given by a inverse v minus f of 0, but if you rewrite this, this is exactly a inverse of v minus a inverse of f of 0. Okay. But if you look at this particular vector, you can see that this is exactly, so the min, so plus and then minus here. So, let me rewrite. So, this is plus minus a inverse of f of 0 that is what you are getting. Then if you see from this calculation you can see that f inverse of 0 is nothing but minus a inverse of f of 0 as a inverse 0 will be 0. Okay. So, that means, so this is again some b v plus w dash where w dash is given by this f inverse of 0 and b is given by a inverse. So, since a a transpose is identity, so that would imply a transpose and a is also identity. So, that means this b is nothing but a transpose which also satisfies the conditions for a. So, that is says that this is again orthogonal matrix. orthogonal matrix. So, that means this f inverse must be by definition an isometric because that is what we checked. Okay. It is one of the characterization of uh, isometric. So, that proves that f inverse must be an element of this isometries of R2. So, now uh, we have checked closure property uh, associativity comes for free identity element is there and we also proved given any f there exists an inverse. So, that proves isometries of R2 is indeed a group. There are many interesting subgroups of this isometries of R2. For example, there is this O of R2. Okay. So, this O of R2 is defined to be. So, all isometries that are actually 
uh, th those are linear okay so or otherwise you can you can write it in terms of this uh, transformations as well so this is those h in isometries of r2 such that this h of 0 is 0 okay so then if you think about it then how the h looks like h looks like hv equal to av plus some w now since h of 0 is equal to 0 that would force that w is 0 so that means h of v must be av where a satisfies a a transpose equal to identity okay so basically this can be identified with all the matrices a from m2 of r okay so you can easily see that these are all matrices comes from actually gl2 of r so gl2 of r nothing but set of all matrices set of all 2 by 2 matrices set of all 2 by 2 matrices such that the determinant of a is non zero so then you can easily see that this condition this a a transpose being identity implies that determinant of a square is equal to 1 because determinant of a is same as determinant of a transpose using this fact you can see the determinant of j square is 1 so that means so this can be replaced as data a is coming from gl2 of r such that the determinant of a is either plus or minus 1 okay so let me just write down this condition first okay which says a is from gl2 of r such that a a transpose is identity okay that is the condition that we are getting there but now using a a transpose is identity we can immediately get determinant has only two possible values so so if you take a from this o of r2 so then we can immediately see that the determinant of a either it can be plus 1 or minus 1 now depending upon whether it is plus 1 or minus 1 it has some physical interpretation okay so we will soon see that this is actually when it is plus 1 then it must be a rotation about origin and when it is minus 1 it must be a reflection with respect to your line that passes through origin okay so it is easy to see this o of r2 is indeed a subgroup of isometries of r2 okay so let us check this so for example we can just check for matrices you take a b from o of r2 so then we have the condition that a a transpose is identity and then b b transpose is identity now you calculate what happens to a b so now a b times a b transpose that is what you need to calculate then this is going to be equal to a b times b transpose a transpose because a b transpose is nothing but b transpose time a, a transpose so then if you if you group them then you get a times b b transpose times a transpose which is going to be a times identity a transpose which is a a transpose which is identity so this proves when you take two elements a b from o of r2 then a the product a b also should be in o of r2 so so this argument says the product is also in o of r2 so now it is not hard to see a inverse must be a transpose and that also satisfy the condition for this orthogonal matrix okay so that means this o of r2 is indeed a subgroup of this isomorphism isomorphism isometries of r2 now we also have this uh, very important uh, group we denote it by this curly t so these are all all the translations of uh, of this uh, isometries of r2 so what it, it is by definition this is tv where v comes from r2 okay so note that this is also a subgroup 
So, this is also a subgroup of this isometries of R2. So, why it is a subgroup? So, if you take T u composition with T w then act it on x then what do you get? You get first T u of T v of x, but T v of x is x plus v. So, this is going to be u T u of x plus v. So, then this is going to be T sorry x of u plus v. So, this is going to be your T u composition T v of x. So, then this cells tells you that this is same as T u u plus v of x. So, that means T u composition T v is nothing but T u plus v and this is true for all u v from R 2. So, in particularly this this curly T which consisting of all translations. So, that is indeed a subgroup of isometries of R 2 because when you take V 0 this T 0 is going to be identity of R 2 and then if you take the inverse of T x inverse then that is going to be T minus x. Okay. From that you can conclude that this is indeed a subgroup of this isometries of R 2. So, there are many many interesting subgroups. Okay. So, now let us see like how uh, these translations actually interact with uh, uh, these uh, other isometries. Okay. So, for example, you start with some isometry f from R isometries of R2 and then you take a translation T v from this T. Okay. Now, what I want to do? I want to take this conjugation T v f T v inverse and then see what it is. So, now you apply this on some w and then calculate what happens and this is going to be T v f. So, w minus v because T v inverse is T minus v. So, this is going to be exactly equal to T v and then f of w minus v. Okay. So, so then this is f of w minus v plus v. So, that is what you get. Okay. So, now uh, if you actually assume that f also fixes the origin okay then f must be linear map so then you can conclude that okay so in case f fixes the origin then you can conclude that f is a linear map in that case f of w minus v has to be f of w minus f of v. Okay. So, then you can if you rewrite this then you get T v f T minus v is going to be exactly equal to of w f of w plus v minus f of v. Okay. So, then what it is this is exactly. So, you 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 take uh, this new isometric. So, which is obtained from just apply this f f w first and then you just translate that with this v minus t v sorry v minus f v. Okay. So, then this is the composition of these two maps T V minus F V time composition F. Okay, so, this is this is what worked. Okay, let us uh, double check. Uh, so, if we have uh, T V F T V inverse so, if you apply it on w then you are getting T v f w minus 
V. Yeah, the calculations are correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this actually tells kind of how these translations are interacting with the interacting with this uh, uh, other uh, isometries that fixes origin. Okay. So now, if you are interested in uh, understanding all isometries, then as we noticed before. So, any given isometry can be written as a composition of translation and isometries that fixes origin. Now, the isometries that fixes origin that has close relationship with uh, this orthogonal matrices. So, then we need to understand uh, what we indeed get from this orthogonal matrices. Okay. So, that is something like uh, we try to understand, but before that uh, let me just uh, make one important uh, uh, observation. Okay. So, if you if you take uh, 3 points in R2, so which are in general position. So, what, are, what does it mean? That means, they do not all lie, in, lie on a line. Okay. You take 3 points, call it uh, P0, P1, and P2, you just assume that they do not lie on a single line. Okay. So, they are in general position, general position. So, then if you have two isometries, okay. so here is the fact, let us say you have two isometries F and G from isometries of R2 and assume that both of them take same values on this p i's for i equal to 0, 1, 2. So, then it forces that f must be same as g. If two isometries, if they take same values on 3 points which are in general position, then we must get those two isometries are same. So, there is no other option. Okay. So, this is very, very important uh, fact. Okay. So, let us see how one can prove this. So, you, you fix this f and g which fixes uh, these, uh, uh, these points p i. Now, notice that uh, if you take uh, because we are in this uh, vector space, so we are able to actually do uh, vector addition and vector subtraction. So, in particular I can look at this p naught minus p naught. So, this is origin and then p 1 minus p naught and then p 2 minus p naught. So, since p naught p 1 p 2 they are in general position. So, they do not lie on a line. So, we can conclude that these 3 points also do not lie on a line. Okay. So, do not lie on a line. So, verify this p 1 minus p naught. So, which is different from P2 minus P0. So, they, they are actually linearly independent because you started with P0, P1, P2, they do not lie on a line. Okay. So, in particularly if you take uh, this these points, okay, they must be linearly independent. So, now uh, if you look at this G inverse F, which is an element of isometries of R2. So, then you can easily see that. Uh, so, this particular map, okay. so this is, uh, this is going to actually again fix all the P i's. Okay. So, this G inverse composition F, so this is going to fix all the P i's for i ranging from 0, 1, 2. Okay. So, if we prove that if you have a isometry that fixes all 3, uh, three points which are not uh, which are in general position, then if we prove that that must be identity. So, then we are done with our claim. Okay. So, here is the claim. So, we say that from this hypothesis G composition F must be identity on R2. So, then from this it is clear that G must be equal to F. Okay. So, this is what we want to claim. 
okay. So, call this is H which is G inverse composition F then the property of H is H of P i equal to P i for all i equal to 1 0 1 2 okay. So, you have an isometry that fixes 3 points which are in general position. So, now what we want to do? We want to claim that this H must be identity. Okay, for that purpose, what we are going to do, we, we take this translation, so which is uh, R to minus P naught. So, this is the translation that we are going to take. So, now what is T of V? T of V is going to be V minus P naught. So, then you conjugate this T, uh, you conjugate this H by T. So, then T H T inverse you look at it. So, then if you compute the uh, the the action of this on any vector v, then what do you get? You get exactly T of H of okay, T inverse is going to be T plus P naught. So, this is H of V plus P naught, okay. then this is going to be H of V plus P naught minus P naught. So, this is going to be your, your vector. So, now if you look at what happens to the origin? So, T H T inverse of 0. So, this is going to be H of P naught minus P naught, but H of P naught is P naught okay, that is what given to us. So, that means this is going to be 0. So, this T H T inverse that fixes origin it is also an isometry. So, T H T inverse is an isometry and T H T inverse fixes origin. Now, note that it is an isometry and fixes origin. So, it has to be linear map. So, if you compute T H T inverse of P i minus P naught. So, then you can see that this is going to be exactly equal to T H T inverse P i and then minus T H T inverse P naught because it is a linear map. But what is T H T inverse P naught? So, you take this formula then just substitute here and then see what it is. So, this is going to be uh, okay. So, we are uh, trying to compute uh, this T H T inverse, okay. So, maybe, yeah, we want to compute it on P1 minus P naught and P2 minus P naught. So, let us let us just compute and then see ok maybe we do not need to sub, subtract them we already have the formula for this uh, entire thing. So, we just substitute there then it is going to be H P i minus P naught plus P naught minus P naught ok from this formula. So, this is for true for any V any V in R 2. So, we can just use that formula. So, then from this you can see that T H T inverse of P i minus P naught is going to be this P naught get cancelled H of P i minus P naught, but H of P i is P i that is what given to us. So, H of P i is P i. So, then this is going to be P i minus P naught. So, that means this T H T inverse it fixes origin and it fixes these two points. T H T inverse of P i minus P naught is same as P i minus P naught where i range from 1 to ok. But note that this P 1 minus P 2 P naught and P 2 minus P naught. So, these points are linearly independent. So, they form a basis. So, these two points form a basis for R 2 and you have a linear operator that fixes the basis vectors. So, that means that linear operator must be identity there is no other option. So, that forces that this T H T inverse being R linear and fixes a basis. So, that forces that this T H T inverse must be identity on R 2 ok but that is what we wanted because T H T inverse is identity implies T H T inverse identity 
implies T H uh, sorry H is identity and once H is identity that implies G inverse F is identity and that implies G equal to F. So that is what we wanted to prove. So given two isometries that fixes three points which are in general position, so that must be like same. Okay. So, uh, so this is something uh, uh, like uh, one can prove using even uh, some basic geometrical ideas. But here, what we did, we have used heavily uh, like algebraic formulas uh, that we know for the isometries, and then we have explicitly computed this conjugation and then use the information about this conjugation that because that conjugation fixes origin as well as it fixes these other two points P1 minus P0 and P2 minus P0. And because P0, P1, P2 they are in general position that would imply that these two points are basis. Then using all these things we proved that this conjugation TH, T inverse must be linear, must be identity. And from that we concluded that both this F and G are same. So, I, I would actually recommend you to actually uh, try to prove this using some basic uh, geometrical ideas. Okay. So, this is where uh, then, then only will understand where you are using this uh, these three points in or in general position. Of course, the only place that to use is that when you subtract then you will be getting actually linearly independent set. So, that is the most important uh, place where you use these three points or in general position. Okay, so let us stop here uh, and then uh, I will continue with understanding uh, this the group of isometries in the next class. Okay, so we still need to kind of understand what are all the possible isometries are there and so on because we, we got general formula. So from that we need to conclude what will be the physical interpretation of those formulas when we when we have some restrictions. Okay. Okay, I will stop here. Thank you.